Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2018 thriller film Hippopotamus. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. At the beginning of the movie, we see a wounded young woman slowly getting back her consciousness in what appears to be a fully white room. The moment she opens her eyes, she panics and tries to get up, but is unable to do so. It turns out her legs are wounded, covered in bandages. As the woman analyzes her surroundings, a sinister male voice appears, telling her she overslept. The man introduces himself as Thomas Allcroft, her kidnapper. He explains to the woman that he plans to keep her captive until she falls in love with him and proceeds to tell the woman her name, Ruby Watts, along with other personal details from her life, like where she's from and where she's gone to university. He even tells her about her parents' professions and how he knows she's afraid of the dark. Ruby clearly doesn't have any memory of how she ended up in Thomas's care, nor does she remember her life prior to her kidnapping. Crying, she asks Thomas what he has done to her, alluding to the wounds on her knees. Thomas tells her he severed her ligaments and instructs her to keep from moving if she ever wants to walk again. He also informs her that he did not touch her private belongings, which are in a black handbag sat on the chair next to the door. On the floor, next to Ruby, we see what appears to be a meal and a small cup containing two pills. Thomas explains that he gave her two pills, one contraceptive pill and one painkiller. He then proceeds to explain to Ruby how their life together will look like. She will be offered daily food. He'll help her wash and go to the bathroom. Her days will start at 7 a.m. and at 11 p.m. and escaping will be practically impossible since they're miles away from the closest household. Once Thomas finishes, Ruby asks if he had assaulted her, to which he replies he didn't. Thomas then leaves, leaving Ruby alone in the room. As the scene comes to an end, we see Ruby caught a glimpse of her bracelet, which bears the engraving Ruby X. The next morning, Thomas brings Ruby her breakfast. Ruby is still sound asleep, but is awakened when Thomas knocks on the wall. Once he leaves, Ruby's sleepy and dazed look morphs into a serious one, revealing that her groggy state was a facade. She then scoots her way to her handbag, which is on the other side of the room. She opens and scavenges through it and pulls out her mirror, which holds her ID. Ruby stares at it, puzzled. After she noticed a shadow from a tiny window, she hurriedly puts her belongings back in her bag, but a small plastic ball escapes and rolls away. Ruby scoots back to her usual spot and notices the ball. She reaches to get it and manages to hide it in her pocket before Thomas enters the room. Thomas brings her a tray of food and inspects her face. He notices she's in pain and says she should have told him. He reaches for his pocket and pulls out a pill bottle. He urges Ruby to take a higher dose and she complies. He hand feeds her the pill and leaves. The next day, she wakes up distressed and tries to get up, but stops as sharp pain runs through her legs. Thomas is already in the room, sitting in a chair close to Ruby. Ruby asks him who he is and what he has done to her. Thomas calmly says the same thing he said to her the first time she saw him in the room, that his name is Thomas Allcroft and that he plans to keep her captive until she falls in love with him. He repeats the same information he knows about her. Ruby asks what he has done to her legs. Thomas explains it was a necessary procedure to limit her chances of running away and that her legs will get better as time passes. He informs her that all she needs to do is stay compliant and take her medication. He assures her that he doesn't have any hidden malicious intentions by giving her contraceptive pills. Ruby's reminded of her everyday schedule and how slim her chances are of escaping. She stays silent until Thomas turns to leave the room. She once again asks him if he assaulted her. This angers Thomas, and he throws her bag as he exits the room. Once alone, Ruby inspects the ball she hid in her pocket. She takes a closer look at her bracelet as well. Later, we see the rest of Ruby's day. Thomas performing physical therapy on Ruby, him bathing her using washcloths, and Ruby repeatedly slamming the ball on the room's door once it's nighttime. The next day, Ruby notices the wound in the back of of her head. She goes to her bag and pulls out a mirror, but doesn't manage to see much of her injury. She ends up slamming the mirror into smaller pieces and takes it closer to her wound. Before she could see anything, she notices Thomas spying on her from the other side of the door. She hides the glass shard underneath the bandage of her left knee and tries to go back to her usual sitting place. Before she does, Thomas enters the room and drugs her. Once it's nighttime, Thomas plays an audio that is aimed to discourage Ruby from moving and escaping. He proceeds to clean and rearrange the room and ends up falling asleep on the chair. His phone alarm wakes him up. He turns the discouraging audio off and sits Ruby in an upward position and leaves. We then see a series of days Thomas and Ruby spend together, which consisted of Thomas bringing Ruby food and helping her with her hygiene, and Ruby spending most of her nights playing catch with her ball. One morning, Ruby is seen folding with the sink's pipes. The mess she's made doesn't appear to bother Thomas when he enters to bring her breakfast. When he investigates what she did, Ruby asks if she could ask him a question. She asks him what would happen if she doesn't fall in love with him, and will she stay captive forever if she doesn't? She goes on to joke about what Thomas did to her legs. 
Thomas asks her what he can give to her, which confuses Ruby. Thomas says she's obviously feeling better due to the fact she's even joking about her situation. Thomas states that she must be getting bored and offers to bring her something in order to make her stay more tolerable. Ruby thinks for a second and asks Thomas to bring her a pillow and a blanket and a book to pass the time. Thomas complies, then asks her about the two drawings on the wall, one of a chair and one of a brain done in pencil. She says they're pretty. Thomas compliments her by saying she looks better and asks her to repeat what she wanted to be brought to her, and she does. The next day, Ruby is seen on a mattress with a pillow beside her. Thomas enters and gives her a book. After she flips through it, she states she read it before. Ruby gets overwhelmed since that book is the only thing she remembers before her life in captivity. Thomas explains to Ruby that she could get back some of her memories if they're triggered by certain triggers, which gives her a glimmer of hope. Thomas offers to help her regain her memory, and she thanks him. Later, when Thomas brings her food, he asks Ruby if there's anything she wants. She says she wants a red bush tea, and he instantly brings it to her. After smelling it, Ruby awakens the memory. She smiles and questions Thomas whether he knew she was going to pick this specific tea. He smiles and tells her that it's the only thing she drinks. Ruby asks him how does he know all the information about her, to which he replies he did his research. Later in the day, Ruby is seen examining her book. She stumbles to a page filled with apparently meaningless letters, but as she puts the mirror piece she hid earlier on the letters, she ends up seeing some of the letters spell out, Don't trust him in the mirror. Thomas carefully enters the room seconds later with a table. It turns out Thomas wanted them to have dinner together, which they do. Thomas asks Ruby about the book and Ruby praises it, especially its ending. Thomas smiles and attempts to take Ruby's hand in his, but Ruby pulls away. Thomas asks Ruby what's wrong. Although hesitant at first, Ruby asks Thomas how many others were held captive before her. Thomas denies her allegations, but Ruby is set on uncovering the truth. She proceeds to accuse Thomas of stalking, enslaving, assaulting, and murdering young women like her. Before she can go on, Thomas bangs his fist on the table, which startles her. He wipes clean the blood on his arm and once again denies her allegations. Ruby claims she doesn't want Thomas having done this before to someone else, as she believes what they have is special. Thomas swears there is no one else, and leaves the room. The second Thomas leaves, Ruby's scared expression disappears, revealing to the audience that she was just pretending. The next day, we see Thomas informing Ruby her legs are healing, but they need more time. When he leaves, Ruby unwraps the bandages from her legs and inspects her injury. It seems as if no cuts were made on her legs. She manages to get up and goes to the door. When she touches the doorknob, she unlocks another memory, which is of a man and Ruby in front of her front door. Ruby gives up on attempting to open the door and goes back to her bed. As she's reading the obscure message in her book, she accidentally smears the ink the message was written with. After she smells the ink that stained her hand, a new memory is unlocked, this time of herself hiding something behind a brick in the room. Ruby removes the brick and a dozen matches fall out, revealing that the obscure messages were written using the matches. Later, Thomas and Ruby are having dinner. Ruby asks for a candle to set a romantic mood. Once Thomas brings it to her and lights it up using a match, he proceeds to tell her that they should start over, and Ruby agrees. Ruby then tells Thomas about the recurring dream she's been having of her sinking deep underwater. As she tells the details of her dream, her hand inches closer to the match. She tells Thomas her dreams end when a hand reaches out to save her. By the end of her story, her hand is on the match, but Thomas has his hand holding hers. Ruby fakes a cough and brings her hand to her chest, successfully taking the match without Thomas noticing. In the next scene, we see how Ruby's days are going. She's scribbling in her book, exercising her legs, and practicing how to use her broken mirror part as a weapon. While Thomas is helping her to walk again, she's pretending her legs aren't in great condition. At the end of the scene, we notice Ruby wrote, play along in her book. The next morning, Ruby is seen doing push-ups. She rushes to her bed once she hears Thomas approaching her room. To avoid suspicion, she pretends to read her book. Thomas suggests he should help her to exercise her legs before dinner, to which she agrees. As Thomas helps Ruby to walk, she once again acts as if her legs are wounded. After they manage to get to the other side of the room, Thomas congratulates her on her progress and states that if they continue this way, they may have dinner upstairs. In the evening, Thomas and Ruby are having dinner again. Thomas proclaims that this is a very special meal and urges Ruby to taste it. After she takes a bite, Ruby unlocks another memory, this one being of her and Thomas having dinner at a restaurant. They seem to be on a date and are comfortable with each other. Thomas then asks Ruby to close her eyes and proceeds to put on a necklace he bought for her. He kisses her on her forehead. We then cut back to the present. Ruby is in shock and asks Thomas whether they were together before. Thomas nods his head and tells Ruby that the meal she vividly remembers was their anniversary meal. Ruby tearfully smiles at him. At night, Ruby is seen brushing her teeth. As she admired the two drawings Thomas put on the walls, she notices R.A.W. written on one of the corners of the drawing. In the morning, Ruby sees someone in a boat whilst looking through a small window from her room. 
Later, she and Thomas are discussing her book. Thomas mentioned how inseparable Ruby was from her book. He starts reminiscing of their memories together. As he tells his story, the scene cuts to Ruby drawings surrounded by numerous crayon drawings. Thomas is sound asleep on her bed. When she made sure he was out cold, Ruby quietly makes her way to the door. Before she opens it, Thomas says it's cold outside, thus she needs a coat. Instead of opening the door, she reaches down to pick up her ball, as Thomas slowly awakens. The scene ends with Ruby saying she can't sleep. The next scene opens with Ruby sleeping in bed and Thomas covering her with a blanket, which triggers another memory of what seems to be her and Thomas being intimate. The next day, Thomas practices with Ruby, which triggers another memory. The memory is of Ruby and Thomas dancing at a party while Thomas is proclaiming his love for her. Ruby tells him she feels the same way and the two kiss. After experiencing the memory, Ruby tells Thomas she now fully believes they were together. Later, Thomas explains how the remote control which controls the whole room's electronics works. He puts up some music and Ruby starts dancing for him. The two laugh and kiss, but before they start to get intimate, Ruby starts crying. Ruby asks him how did they get to this and Thomas agrees to explain it to her. As Thomas is explaining the story, the scene cuts to the past. We see Ruby waiting for Thomas at a bar. She's with her roommate Nick, who's openly flirting with her. Thomas doesn't make it to meet her since he missed the train, thus Ruby and Nick leave to go home. Thomas leaves Ruby a message that he's being picked up by his friend Rob and how he'll hopefully see her soon. Meanwhile, Nick tries to kiss Ruby and she refuses, but he persists. He knocks her unconscious and brutally assaults her. Upon seeing the aftermath of what happened when he came to Ruby's house, Thomas killed the still drunk Nick and carried Ruby to Rob's car. Rob reluctantly drove them both to Thomas's home where Ruby regained her consciousness. It is revealed that Ruby lost her memory due to the incident with Nick. Before Rob can call an ambulance, Thomas stops him. They argue for a bit, but Rob agrees to help Thomas out in his plan to regain Ruby's memory. They travel far north, where Thomas breaks ties with Rob and thanks him for his help. Thomas proceeds to take Ruby to an abandoned island farm where he keeps Ruby prisoner. As time passes, Thomas starts learning about retrograde amnesia, a form of amnesia in which the sufferer forgets everything prior to an attack. He also learned that Ruby's memory seemed to reset to just as it was right after the attack whenever she would sleep a lot. Thomas proceeds to show Ruby pictures to trigger her memory recovery, but she is unresponsive at first. In an attempt to speed up her memory recovery, Thomas learned how to trigger certain memories and control her sleep patterns so she could learn for more than a day. When he gives her her favorite book, Ruby is responsive and shows progress. Thomas continues his efforts, but decides he needs a blank slate in order to truly regain Ruby's trust and memory, so he's constructed the white room and made up the whole scenario about cutting the ligaments of Ruby's legs and being her kidnapper. When Thomas finishes his story, Ruby is left in tears and seems to get her memory back. The two become intimate and fall asleep on one another. Ruby awakens first and turns off Thomas's watch before it can ring his alarm. She takes the broken mirror piece and stabs him. She starts crawling to escape, but Thomas tries to stop her. She kicks him with her feet and manages to escape to the outside. She gazes tearfully at the sky above, then runs to the boat, but passes out before she can make her escape. She awakens in a hospital room with a doctor assuring her she'll be fine and that she may experience some short-term memory loss due to her injury. The doctor is revealed to be Thomas, who yet again orchestrated a different scenario in hopes of gaining Ruby's trust and regaining her memory. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.